to have this done in as fast as our hands. Okay, well, the, well this, this hand should be actually quite good to do. It's interesting, um, a lot of people treat faces but tend to forget about hands, and hands are chronically exposed to ultraviolet, as we know, and um, this leads to differences in both intrinsic and extrinsic changes. And if we were supposed to look at the skin model again just for a moment, um, extrinsic aging would involve chronic damage to the epidermis and the superficial dermis. And this is probably mostly done by chronic ultraviolet exposure, but there are some contributions by other things such as smoking. Do you smoke yourself no, on or no, you don't? Okay. Now, whenever we do get damage by photoagent to the skin, um, it leads to a couple of different things. I suppose the first thing we tend to get is epidermal and superficial dermal atrophy, and this leads to superficial wrinkling, roughening of texture, and also we get the appearances of what we see here, these sort of solar lentiginous, and maybe even actinic keratosis, which is a precancerous state, and um, obviously basal cell or squamous cell carcinomas, and I tend to do a full freckle check screen on anybody that I see with severe photoaging. The second thing that tends to happen, I suppose, a little further down is intrinsic aging. And intrinsic aging would involve atrophy of the deeper dermis and also the fat tissue within it will become uh, atrophied. And probably if we have done far enough, obviously the sort of muscle and the bone as well. Now, Anne isn't too bad here from the point of view that there's still, you know, quite a bit of muscle tissue within it, and the intraocide muscles, when they become atrophied, certainly, you know with older people, their hands can become quite markedly um, atrophic and, and, and age-looking. Now, we've had a number of therapeutic approaches over the years on how to deal with this. We all grew up, I suppose, with chemical peels, and um, from that then, of course, we used um, different lasers, maybe even some additives such as Sculpture Radiance, Derma Rolling, and recently as we became more um, used to use of fractionized resurfacing, I found that fractionized resurfacing probably is a wonderful technique for this because the first thing is that it doesn't take very long to do. The second thing is that you're not placing something abnormal within the patient. The third thing is you just got to be conscious of some things. Um, it's going to take a little longer to heal. Um, don't burn at very high densities. Treat it even um, kinder than with, with the neck because the thickness of the epidermis and dermis as we go down the body tends to get a little smaller. And there's no doubt about it that the hands and the thickness of the epidermis is almost down to 0.7 compared to 1.33 millimeters. So as a consequence, the, the, the skin has you know sort of thinned out quite significantly. We also can see, you know, sort of normally in skin, whether um, there's substantial atrophy also of the skin secondary to collagen loss, and I don't get a good result here. Sometimes if I just get those lentiginous, I, I can actually just um, hit them with the fractionalized um, uh, laser a couple of times over the one area, or maybe even switch off the fractionalized within it. Superficial veins will obviously be left behind, but this type of patient that has a lot of lines, it will be very satisfactory. Aging of the hands involves changes both in pigmentation, which we see here of course, wrinkling, which we can see here, and skin texture generally. And as we said before, this is a result of chronic ultraviolet and environmental exposure. Now one of the advantages, I suppose, of CO2 resurfacing is that for the first time probably that we have a means to safely and effectively improve all these three parameters of photoaging at the one time. And this is a wonderful, you know, sort of development from the point of view that if we use dermal rolling, we'd probably just get rid of the wrinkles, but we leave the lentiginous. <coughs> and um, if we use some of the chemical ablation methods, such as one touch, which is um, high TCA content, we may get rid of some of the lentiginous, but um, will not effectively change the texture of the skin. So because this is doing 
two things. Is it bleeding? And it's also forming collagen. Then um, we can get rid of all three parameters. Hello, the um, again, the square pattern I find is probably the easiest. Um, the energy have run at 100, maybe even at 125 millijoules. And for some reason, the rate, I always tend to run in hertz, whereas from doing faces, I tend to run in watts. I think this is a hangover from the days when we were doing acne resurfacing, when we had to get up to 25 watts. But certainly, I know the swing more now is towards sort of the rate. And I suppose the rate that I would tend to do would be 1.5, which is both about 5.5 watts. And it gives me the advantage that the thickness they're there first, I can almost do them and tend to get them out of the way. And then I can do everything else afterwards. Now, we know that as you get older, the dermis gets thinner. So a 21-year-old man will have a dermis thickness on the back of the hands, probably 1.25 millimeters. And um, a 7-year-old man, that will have dropped to not 0.7. Whereas in the face, probably the average dermis would be in the region of probably about 1.375 up to 1.5 millimeters. And um, as a consequence of that, then obviously we need to treat the arms and the hands with some more laser respect. And you can see that whenever I'm re-going over the places where I've done the lentiginous, the kick that little brown look almost up for double pass, but it's going to be a little bit of pressure and charring. The temperature we get to also is quite important because collagen will tend to denature and uh, remodel itself at different temperatures. 50 to 60 degrees centigrade will give a different effect certainly on um, collagen thinking up in the 70 or 80. At one, it will begin to, the spiral molecule will begin to tighten. It's got a sort of a helical structure, particularly type one, collagen A, so we tend to find in the backs of hands. Smart side dot by Zeta. And it has certainly the advantage of doing stack pulses, and I, I, I like that. For some reason, eyes I tend to do in Dublin just with this other machine, um, which is Illuminex Active FX, and it doesn't tend to use stack pulses, but for some reason I just like the double pass effect of it. Now, I also grew up on Airbnb Yags, and we know with Airbnb Yags, one of the big advantages that you just keep passing and go deeper and deeper, whereas with CO2, probably we do tier four passes, it will not tend to go much deeper. Uh, the water is sort of set depth, unless you're using obviously the deep effects, but you will get more vaporization of tissue and potential problems of scarring. I think in any patient, if you've got prolonged erythema, particularly with any evidence of linear formation, consider the possibility of little hypertrophic scarring starting. We've only had probably one case of about 4,000 that, that I'm aware of, and that patient um, required dermatix, steroid creams. It shows a slightly late diagnosis, so for a long time we thought it was a fungal infection. And I had her seen by some of my colleagues in Italy, and um, they thought it was a fungal infection also, but then we realized it was probably a little bit of scarring. Now, the fungal infection could have given rise to it, but normally then after that, that type of patient would need to be treated with a PDT laser and um, probably also um, PDT in terms of photodynamic therapy. Um, 